Ignaz Semmelweis. Ignaz Semmelweis was a Hungarian doctor working in Vienna's General Hospital in the 1840s. While serving in the maternity wards, he noticed something disturbing. Women were dying at rates of 10 to 18 percent from childbed fever in the doctor's ward, while the midwife's ward had only 2 to 3 percent mortality from the same condition. After careful observation, Semmelweis realized doctors routinely performed autopsies in the morning before attending to births, while midwives did not. In 1847, he implemented a new protocol, mandatory hand washing with chlorine solution before checking patients. The results were immediate. Death rates in the doctor's ward decreased to match the midwife's ward. But instead of praise, Semmelweis faced ridicule and hostility. Leading doctors were offended by the suggestion their hands were causing deaths. Without germ theory, which wouldn't exist for decades, Semmelweis couldn't explain exactly why his method worked. The medical establishment labeled him obsessive and dismissed his evidence as mere coincidence. His career crumbled as he was forced to leave Vienna, and his mental health deteriorated as his warnings went ignored. In 1865, Semmelweis was committed to an asylum, where he died just two weeks later at age 47. Only after Pasteur developed germ theory and Lister pioneered antiseptic surgery, Semmelweis was finally vindicated. The simple practice of hand washing is now considered the most basic medical standard worldwide, saving countless millions of lives in the process. Rachel Carson Rachel Carson was a marine biologist and author in the mid-20th century. In 1962, she published Silent Spring, a book warning about the devastating effects of widespread pesticide use, particularly DDT, on wildlife and human health. Carson documented how these chemicals entered the food chain, accumulated in animal tissues, and caused ecological damage. She presented evidence that these toxins could potentially lead to cancer and genetic damage. The title, Silent Spring, referred to a future where pesticides had killed birds, leaving an eerie silence across America. The chemical industry launched a fierce campaign against her. Monsanto, now acquired by Bayer, published a parody called The Desolate Year, which described a world of famine and disease caused by banning pesticides, while Velsicol Chemical threatened legal action against her publisher. Industry representatives dismissed her as hysterical and an alarmist. Many critics attacked her personally rather than addressing her scientific evidence. Carson was already fighting breast cancer while writing the book and died in April 1964, less than two years after publication. Before her death, she saw the beginning of her vindication when President Kennedy ordered his science advisory committee to investigate her claims. Their report largely confirmed her findings. By 1972, DDT was banned in the United States. Her work directly influenced the creation of the Environmental Protection Agency and modern environmental legislation. Today, Carson is recognized as a founder of the modern environmental movement, with current research continuing to validate many of her warnings. Innovations like these usually come from well-organized, efficiently run teams. And I think we might have had these discoveries much earlier if we'd had something like today's sponsor, Odoo. It's essentially your business's command center, letting you access all of these essential tools and much more, all from a simple, centralized platform. The best part isn't just the money you save by using one platform instead of subscribing individually to each tool. It's the massive amount of time you save by not needing to learn multiple systems. Everything is as intuitive as possible. Take their accounting tool, for example. You have a clear, streamlined dashboard where each important category, such as bank accounts, cash flow, vendor bills, and customer invoices, is easily accessible, showing you key details. It also features automated invoicing, which uses AI with an impressive 98% recognition rate, meaning you'll never need to manually enter invoices or vendor bills anymore. You just need to validate the AI AI's entries. Now let's take a look at another powerful tool they offer, the Projects tool. It provides a comprehensive dashboard displaying every important detail at a glance, including task statuses, recent activities, remaining time, and more. You can easily switch between multiple intuitive views to find the layout that works best for you. Also, the Projects tool offers detailed reporting features, covering key areas like budgeting, milestones, project profitability, and much more, keeping your projects on track and organized. And remember, these are just two examples of the dozens of powerful tools they offer. You can explore them yourself by signing up for a free 14-day trial, no credit card required, through the link in the description. Thanks again to Odoo for sponsoring today's video. Barry Marshall Barry Marshall was an Australian doctor in the early 1980s. Along with his colleague Robin Warren, he observed something unusual in stomach biopsies from patients with gastritis and ulcers, small, curved bacteria living in an environment that medical textbooks declared too acidic for bacteria to survive. Marshall and Warren proposed that stomach ulcers were caused by bacterial infection, not stress or spicy foods, as the medical establishment had claimed for decades. These bacteria, later named Helicobacter pylori, could be treated with antibiotics 
antibiotics rather than the expensive acid-blocking medications and restrictive diets doctors had been prescribing for years. While they managed to publish their initial findings in the scientific journal The Lancet in 1983, the medical community responded with overwhelming skepticism. At conferences, specialists dismissed Marshall's presentations. Gastroenterologists insisted that no bacteria could possibly survive in stomach acid and that his results must be contamination or error. Pharmaceutical companies, which made billions from acid-blocking medications, showed little interest in pursuing his findings. Frustrated by this rejection and unable to develop an animal model for his theory, Marshall took a drastic step in 1984. He drank a broth containing the H. pylori bacteria, developed severe gastritis within days, and then cured himself with antibiotics, proving his own theory by using himself as the test subject. Even after this dramatic demonstration, acceptance came gradually. Throughout the late 1980s and early 1990s, evidence increased until major medical authorities finally acknowledged that most ulcers were caused by bacterial infection. In 2005, Marshall and Warren were awarded the Nobel Prize in Medicine for their discovery. John Snow John Snow was a British physician in 19th century London. In 1854, London's Soho district was hit by a cholera outbreak that killed approximately 500 people within a few weeks. While the medical establishment firmly believed that diseases like cholera spread through miasma, which was a word that stood for bad air or foul vapors, Snow proposed a different theory. He documented the cholera cases and discovered they concentrated around a public water pump on a local street. Snow concluded that contaminated water, not air, was spreading the disease. He showed his findings to local authorities, and the pump handle was removed shortly afterwards. However, medical authorities were largely skeptical of Snow's waterborne theory. Many leading physicians stuck to the miasma theory instead. The idea that tiny organisms in water could cause disease went against established medical beliefs. After the outbreak naturally subsided, the pump was eventually put back into service. Snow died in 1858, and his theory gained wider acceptance only gradually. It wasn't until scientists like Robert Koch identified the cholera bacterium in the 1880s that Snow's work was fully accepted. Today, he's recognized as a founding father of epidemiology. His disease mapping techniques became standard practice in public health, and his evidence-based approach serves as the foundation for how we track and contain disease outbreaks worldwide. Claire Patterson Claire Patterson was an American geochemist in the mid-20th century. While trying to find the age of the Earth, Patterson developed new laboratory techniques to measure tiny amounts of lead in ancient rocks. Patterson's Earth-dating research, however, led him to a disturbing discovery. When measuring lead levels in the environment, he found that modern humans had abnormally high lead concentrations in their bodies, many times higher than pre-industrial humans. Patterson identified the main source as leaded gasoline, which released tons of toxic lead into the air daily. Through a series of papers in the 1960s, he warned that this widespread lead exposure posed a serious public health threat. The powerful lead in oil industries responded by attacking Patterson's work. The Ethyl Corporation, which produced the lead additive, and other industry actors worked to discredit his research. They successfully blocked him from joining National Research Council committees on lead safety and attempted to undermine his scientific credibility. Industry-funded scientists publicly dismissed his concerns as exaggerated and unfounded. Despite this opposition, Patterson persisted for decades, improving his research and advocating for lead regulation. His work eventually proved undeniable, leading to the Clean Air Act and the gradual removal of lead from gasoline beginning in the 1970s. By the time Patterson died in 1995, his once controversial findings had become scientific facts. Blood lead levels in Americans dropped by more than 80% after lead was removed of gasoline. Today, he's recognized not only for accurately dating the Earth at 4.55 billion years old, but also as a public health hero, Alfred Wegener. Alfred Wegener was a German meteorologist and polar researcher in the early 20th century. In 1912, he proposed a theory that all continents had once been joined together in a single landmass before drifting apart to their current positions. Wegener noticed that the coastlines of South America and Africa seemed to fit together like puzzle pieces. He gathered evidence from multiple scientific fields, including matching fossils and similar rock formations found on continents now separated by oceans. He called this ancient supercontinent Pangaea and argued that the continents had been slow slowly moving across the Earth's surface for millions of years. The geological establishment reacted with overwhelming hostility and ridicule. Leading geologists and geophysicists dismissed Wegener's theory as an impossible fantasy. They mocked him as an outsider with no formal training in geology. The American Association of Petroleum Geologists held a symposium specifically to debunk his ideas. Critics pointed out that Wegener couldn't explain what force could possibly move entire continents across the Earth's surface, with the British geologist Harold Jeffries 
famously calling his theory utter damned rot. American geologist Roland T. Chamberlain claimed Wegener's approach was less scientific than the evidence for a lost Atlantis. Wegener died in 1930 during an expedition in Greenland, with his continental drift theory being still widely rejected. It wasn't until the 1950s and 1960s, with the discovery of seafloor spreading and the development of plate tectonics theory, that scientists found the mechanism that proved Wegener's ideas. Evidence from the ocean floor finally provided proof that continents do indeed move. Gregor Mendel Gregor Mendel was an Austrian monk who did experiments with pea plants in his monastery garden during the 1850s and 1860s. Through careful crossbreeding and record-keeping, Mendel tracked how traits like plant height, seed shape, and flower color were passed from one generation to the next. His experiments led him to discover fundamental laws of inheritance that contradicted the prevailing scientific beliefs of his time. While most scientists thought traits blended together like mixing paint, Mendel demonstrated that inherited characteristics were passed along as discrete units, what we now called genes. He showed that certain traits were dominant, while others were recessive. When Mendel published his findings in 1866, they were largely overlooked by the scientific community. His paper received very little attention and was cited only a handful of times in scientific literature over the next three decades. Mendel eventually abandoned his genetics research and focused on his administrative duties as abbot of his monastery until his death in 1884. In 1900, 16 years after Mendel's death, three botanists, Hugo de Vries, Karl Korins, and Eric von Chermak each claimed to have independently rediscovered Mendel's work while conducting their own plant breeding experiments. His once overlooked experiments became the foundation of modern genetics, with his principles now known as Mendel's laws. Today, he is universally recognized as the father of genetics. Galileo Galilei Galileo Galilei was an Italian scientist in the early 17th century. After learning about the invention of the telescope in the Netherlands, Galileo built better versions that allowed him to make new planetary observations of Jupiter's moons and the phases of Venus. These observations led Galileo to publicly support the Copernican model that placed the Sun, not Earth, at the center of our solar system. This directly challenged the Catholic Church's official position, which maintained that Earth was immobile at the center of the universe. Galileo argued that mathematics and direct observation not ancient texts or authorities, should determine scientific truth. In 1616, a church committee declared the Copernican theory foolish and absurd in philosophy and erroneous in faith. Despite warnings, however, Galileo kept defending the Copernican model. In 1633, at age 70, he was judged by the Roman Inquisition, found vehemently suspect of heresy, and forced to withdraw his views. He spent the remaining nine years of his life under house arrest. His book, Dialogue Concerning the Two Chief World Systems, was banned and listed on the Index of Prohibited Books. It wasn't until October 1992, more than 300 years later, that Pope John Paul II acknowledged the suffering caused to Galileo and expressed regret for how the Case was handled. Today, Galileo is recognized as an important figure in modern science for his insistence on observation-based evidence and mathematical proof. Nikola Tesla Nikola Tesla was a Serbian-American inventor in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. After briefly working for Thomas Edison, Tesla developed and promoted an alternating current system that could transmit power over much longer distances than Edison's direct current system. Tesla's AC system challenged Edison's electrical business empire, as he proved that alternating current was far more efficient for widespread electrical distribution, being capable of transmitting electricity over hundreds of miles with very little energy loss. He also conceived of wireless power transmission, remote control devices, and radio communication. Edison and his associates launched what became known as the War of Currents, a campaign to discredit Tesla's new electricity system. Edison's company staged public demonstrations where animals were electrocuted with alternating current to show it was dangerous. Edison promoted his system as the safer option while warning about the Tesla one's supposed dangers through newspapers and pamphlets. Meanwhile, Tesla struggled to maintain control of his patents and did not receive proper recognition for his innovations. Despite his inventions, Tesla died in 1943 in relative obscurity, living in a New York hotel room paid for by his friend. Many of his ideas about wireless technology, radio, and remote control were brushed off as either too impractical or downright fantastical. Today, however, Tesla has been vindicated. The global electrical grid runs on the system he invented. In 1943, the U.S. Supreme Court acknowledged that Guglielmo Marconi's radio patents were built upon earlier work by Tesla. If you liked this video, subscribe for similar ones or join my Discord to suggest a